Alright guys, welcome to another requested video and this one is about how to use the Asset Manager. And yeah, if, uh, to demonstrate this, um, I just made a little project, actually the, um, these three projects here, Desktop, Android and well the Core Project. Um, there's nothing in except these three classes, the main class, um, the class that extends the game as usual and one screen. It, all it does is basically very basically <laughs> just display this image here um, so let's quickly have a, um, a look so you know what's going on um, we extend the game and I set the screen the rest is just overriding the methods and calling super so I actually don't really need to override them but anyway um, and the game screen that has been set right here simply has a sprite badge a texture and a sprite um, in show it creates the texture from this uh, image here then it creates the sprite and then it sets the size of the sprite and yeah we draw the sprite on the screen we just pose and I forgot to just post the batch okay but that's it um, so now how do we do this using the asset manager because what we want to do is we want to take all the loading and disposing of assets out of this game screen and put it in some some asset management. Um, right now we have the texture right here. Uh, we are going to have the text right here still, but um, here we create a new texture, so it has to be loaded from the image, and we dispose it again. And if we do this with a lot of assets every time we switch the screen, um, it might get a little bit slow, especially on Android um, or iOS or whatnot. So just um, let's keep track of all these assets somewhere else and just use them here. Um, for this we are going in to create another class. Let's put it right here and let's just call it assets. It's not going to extend anything, it's just the assets class. And inside of here let's use an asset manager. So let's say, actually let's make this a public static final asset manager. You're going to see why. Let's just call this manager. Um, then we can define some, let's say we want to define a string, public static final string, and let's just call it algorithm, because that's what the image is called. And we'll uh, set it to the path to the image, and that is assets slash algorithm.png. So now what we have to do is we have to load this algorithm image using the manager. Um, let's make two methods here, one that's called load. And one that's called dispose. The dispose method is simply going to dispose the manager, which basically means um, as you can see if you hover over the dispose method that all the assets that are loaded by the manager will going to be disposed so yeah we don't have to dispose every single asset ourselves the, the manager is going to do it now in the load method um, we'll go we are going to well load all the assets and right now we just have one um, let's see what kind of load method the manager gives us so there are three methods to load something. The first one takes an asset descriptor, I'm going to explain that in a second, and the third one, um, ta the second and third one both take a string for the file name and a class for the type. Let's go to the second one and simply supply the algorithm uh, string as a file name and the type is a texture. Because if we had for example a texture atlas we could put another string up here and say, uh, yeah, that's some texture atlas, and then we would say, um, this is a texture atlas. But it isn't. Um, this, this simply um, tells the manager which loader to use, because for a texture, it, it obviously has to be loaded different, uh, differently than a texture atlas, for example, or a particle effect or something. So that's actually it already for this method. It's really not much. Um, now, no, we just have to use it. We have to call the load method and the dispose method. And we want to do that, for example, inside here. 
because we set the screen, but we don't want the screen to a actually load stuff. We want the game to load it once, then use it, and in the end dispose it. So let's go with disposing first, and we are simply going to say assets.dispose, which is the method that we just wrote right here um, that disposes the manager, and well, everything is disposed. Um, then in the create method, we have to load stuff, and it's a little bit, um, yeah, you can misinterpret it a little bit. At first, let's call the assets.load method, which again is the one we just wrote here that simply um, loads all the things into the uh, yeah manager. But it's still not quite correct. Um, we're going to get to that in a second. At first, let's go about how to actually use um, the yeah the assets that we have. So inside our game screen, instead of saying saying new texture and texture dispose, we don't actually have to keep the texture here. We can also delete it out of the dispose method because we don't need to dispose it. It's going to dispose. It is going to be disposed right here when we dispose the whole game when we close the whole game. Um, and for example, we could say now that the texture right here, we don't even need to get it here. All we need to do is to say assets.manager to get access to the manager and maybe import assets so we can s actually see the manager. Yep. And now we have a bunch of get methods. Um, there's th that one that takes the asset descriptor again that I'm going to, to explain later and two other ones. Um, the first simply takes the file name and the file name is saved in assets algorithm. But like this um, as you can see, um, it returns, well, okay, now you just see the other, the error. But anyway, get returns um, an object, and the sprite constructor does not take an object. So we ha kind of have to um, say that this is a texture. Now what we could do is we, we, could, we could just cast this um, to a texture, but that's not the, the best way. Um, it's better to simply say, um, we give this another another argument, which is texture dot class texture dot class, and like this we get the algorithm casted to a texture. If we said something else dot class, we would get an error and we would know what's going on because um, we loaded the algorithm image saying that it's a texture right here, so we can't get it saying it's a particle effect or something, because that just doesn't really make much sense. Um, okay, and, well, yeah, now we are going to get an error, but that um, is on purpose. Yep, and we get the error, and it says, oh, bop, 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 acid not loaded, algorithm.png, but you're like, Wait, we actually loaded it. We, we loaded it right here in the assets method. Manager.load. And that is called right here. So why is it not loaded? Um, that's a common mistake because it's a little bit um, easy to misunderstand uh, what this load actually means. To see, we have to hover over it. And we'll see adds the given asset to the loading queue of the asset manager. And read that exactly. It, it just adds the, the asset to the loading queue. It doesn't actually load it. To really load it, um, we need to go into, right, let's just go like here, and let's say assets.manager, and we need to call the update method. And update simply loads for a little time and then returns if it's done with loading. So we need to, to get a while loop here and while it is not done loading, so if, if update returns true, it's done loading, and while it is not done loading, um, we need to keep updating. So, and now for example, we could say, um, how, how far is the, the asset manager actually done with loading? So, uh, there is this assets.manager.getProgress method, if I spell that correctly, get progress, and that returns a float between 0 and 1. 0 means nothing is loaded, and 1 means all the assets are loaded. And if we take the times 100 and add a percent sign, it already looks good. Um, now that we just have, one, we just have one asset now, and as you can see, it, it, it has been loaded. 
but we only see 0% here all the time because it's just one asset and um, well after that one asset has been loaded is 100% and before it's 0% uh, so yeah we won't really it doesn't really make much sense to have this if you just have one asset um, let's just put some more assets in to see that this is actually working and let's just say we have five of these algorithm images algorithm two three four five um, and we load all of them two three four five and I actually have all these images two three four five right inside the project already right uh, yeah here they are so we want to load the load these as well we are not going to use them and they are actually the exact same image but we're not going to use them um, they just have to be loaded so we can actually see the effect of this whole update stuff and get progress now let's see what we have right here and yeah we see 80 percent 60 percent 40 percent 20 percent zero percent so at zero percent none has been loaded at 20 percent like i don't know one or two have been loaded four percent more have been loaded and yeah uh, that makes sense so you could use this to make some loading bar for example progress bar um in, in the loading screen in a splash screen or something um now that is as this is pretty unnecessary at the moment um so we could also just say assets dot manager dot finish loading and that simply keeps like calling update and just just loads all the assets so we don't have uh, like if we just have this few assets that we just have right now um we don't need this um yeah we don't need to tell the user how far the loading I is because it's like done in in three seconds <laughs> three milliseconds or something so we just want to get done and yeah don't care about how far we are um, this works just the same as well so that's about it um, yeah actually that's really about it and it really helps you to organize your asset in, in my opinion um, just a quick review here Oh, actually, I, I forgot to tell you one thing, and that was the asset descriptor. Um, this load method here, let's say we do this with a second algorithm, well, with a fifth one. Um, the load method <coughs> also took an asset descriptor. Now, the asset descriptor has to be created. So let's just say algorithm 5, and that's not going to be a string, but an asset descriptor. Um, it is a generic class, so we can supply the class that we actually want to load. So we want to load a texture, so it's an asset descriptor for a texture. And let's create a new asset descriptor. And now that has a few constructors as well. Of, of course, I won't go over all of them. But the first one, again, is the file name. And the second one is the, yeah, the class texture.class okay so now we have a little bit longer line here but we have a shorter here and if we go into the game screen and we decide we want to load algorithm 5 we don't have to we, we actually can't supply this class anymore because now algorithm 5 is the asset descriptor and we can just take this away and it automatically knows that this algorithm that w what we want to get from the manager is a texture because that is saved in the asset descriptor. Um, let's just have a quick look in the, at the asset descriptor source so we know what's going on and yeah we see it stores the file name, it stores the type and that's exactly what we need. So um, because this asset descriptor is an asset descriptor for a texture, um, the game screen, the, the get method here already knows that a texture I is going to be returned by this asset descriptor. Um, yeah so now that's actually it about the video uh, for the video about the asset manager itself but yeah I th think I'll just take the opportunity and introduce my little um, subclass of this asset manager and that's called an annotation asset manager actually let's go into the asset class and do it the way that the annotation asset manager um, allows you to 
So at first we only use an N notation asset manager. It's from libgdx utils, if you couldn't guess that. Um, and let's just say we don't need this load method here and we, well, we can keep the dispose method, but we don't need the load method anymore because the goal was to just supply, to do, to just add everything once. Uh, here, right, until now, we still needed to do everything twice. We needed to um, say the algorithm images are those at these paths and then we needed to load them but we don't want to to actually load them like this um, now all we need to do is let's actually say we put this all into one line because yeah it's just shorter okay and now we can give it these annotations and say it's an asset of the type texture.class and um, that actually um, this this asset annotation is applied to all of these in this line because they are just separated by a comma. Um, for this asset descriptor we can just say it's an asset because um, the asset descriptor already yeah knows what which class this asset is is yeah <laughs> which class this asset is from. So um, now in the asset manager right here, um, asset manager tutorial, game, subclass, whatever, uh, this method doesn't exist anymore and we'll just say assets.manager.load and we can pass the assets class in. So it will just search for all um, fields that are annotated with add asset and load them. <laughs> as simple as that. Um, yeah, that's actually it already. The rest is just like a normal asset manager because it's a subclass of the asset manager. So in the game screen, we still get it the same way. We can also say algorithm and texture dot class again. It's all the same. Uh, yeah, let's just prove it works. And apparently it does. So. If you want to use that, that's also fine with me, absolutely. <laughs> um, you can click the annotation on the right bottom side there and it will take you to the article about it. Um, Alright, so thanks for watching. Um, have fun organizing your assets this way now. Um, it really is a good idea in my opinion. And yeah, that's basically it. See you next time.